Stanway House, um, by kind permission of Lord and Lady Needpath, for a UKIP function to raise funds for Gloucestershire Branch. It's a beautiful summer's day. If you look around, you can see we've got a band playing over there. Do you want to pan over? And some beautiful vintage cars. And just behind me is a lovely lake where they have the biggest fountains in Europe. And later on, they'll be setting the fountains off. The house in the background is Stanway House. Um, and Lord and Lady Needpath hopefully will be turning up very shortly. Welcome to you all from the Cheltenham branch of UKIP, um, our annual summer party, this year a pig roast or a hog roast. Um, I'm the chairman, Neil Worry. This has been a good team effort, and particular thanks to David Blair, who most of you would have contacted with regards to tickets over there, um, and most of the admin. And also thanks to Edna Kemp and Tom and David Lyle and Joan Hedworth for their help. I'd like to thank Lord Neepart for the use of his tithe barn and grounds, which he gener generously allows us to use each year. Just a brief bit about the itinerary. Lunch will follow a um, uh, short speech by Roger Natman. Um, and for lunch, you do need your tickets and you need to hang on to your tickets for the dessert as well, okay? I think we're okay on numbers, but I was a bit concerned that it's, at one point there were too many people who hadn't actually paid for their tickets and we're going to just turn up on the gate, so I was slightly worried we might be outnumbered, because the, the hog can only do so many. Um, the band, the uh, Gloucester Excelsior Band, will play again, sort of, just after, well, during, during the meal a little bit afterwards. And uh, we had them last year. And welcome again. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have some cars and bikes behind you there from the Cotswold Classic Car Club. Um, it's not the classic uh, Cotswold Classic Car and Bike Club. It's just the classic Cotswold Classic Car Club. But nonetheless, there are some motorbikes as well. And you're welcome to have a look at those and chat to, to the owners. And then there's a tombola being run by our county chairman, David Bendel, who is... I can't see him. Where is he? <laughs> He's the one with the hat and his wife in the lovely pale duck egg blue jacket in the door there. And the tombola's just inside, so there's none of this hanging around at the end for the raffle where you have to wait half an hour and everybody collects their stuff. This is, you buy your ticket, you win a prize or you, or you may or may not win a prize. So just please support that during the course of the afternoon. Um, towards the end of the afternoon, 3.30, 4 o'clock-ish, we'll, uh, Lord Neathparts very generously said that we can um, ignite or press the button on his uh, fountain, which is, now I get a bit muddled about this, I keep trying to get it clear, but it is the tallest gravity-fed fountain in the EU. Oh, must you mention it? <laughs> we didn't want to see it. It's the tallest carbon fountain in the world. In the world, it's so the world's yeah. tallest gravity fountain in the world. Right. Um, it's the second tallest fountain in Europe. But for what it's worth, it's the tallest fountain in the EU. I nothing. <laughs> <laughs> The last bit of admin is the loser, for those of you that haven't already found them, I'll just cross over there by the little white truck. The ladies um, sort of straight ahead of you and then the gents is round to the side. Um, so before I ask Lord Neathpart to just say a few words to personally to introduce our guest speaker, Roger Natman, I'd just like to say that he has agreed to speak for around 12 minutes. Um, and we're going to watch this because there was a year apparently when another MEP was here and he spoke for half an hour and everybody was getting extremely hungry. 90 seconds. What? 90 seconds? 12 minutes I've allowed him. Um, as we don't want to burn our pig as I, or our hog. Now, I'm sure that Roger will also be available during the afternoon uh, to chat to you. So this is your chance to talk to your MEP if you've got any burning issues to chat to him. So finally, I've asked him to cover three topics. 
what is the what are the current or the current key issue uh, in the EU at the moment that we in the UK should be concerned about? What is the key issue or issues? Secondly, how are UKIP or what is UKIP going to do about those key issues? And thirdly, how do our UKIP MEPs daily get involved in fighting those issues? So without further ado, I'll hand, just hand over to Lord Neil Part, who will just formally introduce Roger Natman. Neil, um, I liked your speech. The only bit I didn't like was when I thought you were saying that I was going to have to speak for 12 minutes. <laughs> um, I'm going to speak for one minute, or it might be two, um, to thank Neil for all he does for um, this area as a, a candidate from time to time. Um, and also for helping to organise this very nice party, which is one of the high points of my year. And it's nice to see so many people here, and it's nice to see such a good day. Yeah, yeah. And it's particularly nice to see Roger Natman again. Um, we really like seeing him. Uh, we like seeing Malcolm again, and we yeah. like seeing Malcolm's dog. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Yuki dog section, which <laughs> this dog is very high up in. Um, but leaving that aside, um, very, very nice to see you all, and particularly nice to introduce Roger as our next speaker. Thank you. What an absolutely perfect place, isn't it, to be allowed to come each year and drink, eat, talk, Listen to the music and uh, congratulations to the Excelsior Band, who are good and seem to be getting better every year. So it's nice to have them here as well. Thank you to the branch and all, all the Gloucestershire branches for um, really making sure that UKIP continues to grow. Uh, despite what your chairman has said, I've actually been told that my job is to sell some badges. It's, it's sad in life, one minute you're leader, the next you're told. <laughs> <laughs> well, here goes your 28th time, and you'll just have to go and bear it. The same joke, 28th time, according to Malcolm Wood, but it has a purpose. Some of you have arrived and you're not properly dressed. This on this occasion includes myself, but really so. Because you've no UKIP badges on. And I tell the story how I did have a, a badge on the other day and went by train from Exeter and the ticket collector said, ah, I said, UKIP, UKIP, yes, can't give you a free ticket, wish I could, could keep up the good work. <laughs> and then got as far as the Reading bus station where there was a lady, if I may put it this way, of ample proportions yes. <laughs> who said, I want a badge, I want uh, to, to increase my tattoo. Back there it says, with a Union Jack, made in Britain 1966. <laughs> now I want the badge. <laughs> and then I got an Air France, which is not usually a very wise thing to do unless you've got quite a lot of hours at your disposal. <laughs> and uh, the air hostess said, ah, you get them. Um, we need a party like yours in France. <laughs> so that's in one journey, and it's um, in addition, over the last few years, I've had many free taxi drives, rides. So it really does make an impression, and gosh, there's a few available for sale here. <laughs> about 20 in there. I, think they're, I don't know how much they are. Six pounds. Six pounds. But you are, if you like, the, the, the Dick Morris mobile billboard. Mm -hmm. And you'll find in the course of a year, if you <coughs> don't mind wearing them, it's not that everybody approves of it. You Sometimes you see eyes sliding away. But you're also reminding people on a daily basis uh, who you are. And then when those people say, what can I do to help the party? That's what you can do. And you can do it for just six pounds. <laughs> now, as regard to Neil's points, we're uh, now coming up to a very important time because Mr. Blair, uh, who is, some say, still Prime Minister, <laughs> is likely to go and sign a constitution uh, for Great Britain in the next uh, week or two. Except it's not really a constitution, so don't worry your pretty heads about it. It's a mini constitution. It's a, 
In fact, it's anything but a constitution. It's a reformation of the some of the previous stuff, a tidying up exercise. One thing certain, however, is that the name is not a constitution, therefore you're not going to get a referendum. And why aren't you going to get a referendum? <coughs> why aren't you going to get a referendum on this or anything else? Because we're now the majority. Because if they went to have a referendum on all this, they would lose. After all, it wasn't us, it wasn't you that had the chance of a referendum. They never thought in their tiny minds that France or Holland would be the two original countries and that they would say no. Then they had to invent why they were saying no. So that's the big thing that we're doing currently. And what are we doing about it? As I'll say, what are UKIP MEPs doing about it? Well, uh, Malcolm here, our excellent agent for the South West, and um, others are going to ask and have already written in the last week to every councillor, I believe, and certainly every council throughout the southwestern region saying we can find a legitimate question for you to ask to arrange for referendums in your parish. And all you need is six people write to a parish clerk and saying, I think we should have a referendum on this. And so we're going to the people say to Mr. Blair and all the three traditional parties who are so desperate that you don't get a say, because they'll be embarrassed if you say no. We're going to the people who are organised within quite a number of parishes, perhaps 50 up and down the southwest, so that you can all have a chance within that parish to say no. And I tell you this, that if they go ahead with a constitution or mini constitution or whatever it's supposed to be, without a referendum, then it will lack legitimacy for all time. Now finally, um, I've been very lucky lately. I've had uh, some, some, some enjoyable evenings. I had always wanted, as a matter of ambition, if that's what it is, to, uh, to debate in the Oxford Union and was able to do the other night. Fortunately, we lost by three votes, but out of several hundred people, that wasn't too bad. Um, and uh, and uh, Mr. Clark was not best pleased uh, because you know they all think that the Cambridge Don the Union, the Cambridge Union, etc., and the Oxford Union are so pro-European. But things are turning. Things are turning. Ten years ago, if people had said, "Do you want to get out of the EU?" and you'd answered yes, you're one of a small minority. In fact, you're downright odd. Now. It's only those who've got their noses in the trough who actually want yeah, yeah. to stay in. The vast majority of British people say get out. Yeah. Now, the other exciting thing that I had very recently was uh, a chance to, to speak to the Bruges at Bruges. Twenty years ago, Margaret Thatcher made what is called the Bruges speech, which was the first really cynical speech regarding Europe and it was changed the climate at the time and um, from 1963 when we went in and remember that Margaret Thatcher, Norman Tebbit, all the rest of them, they're all government ministers, sign up for the Treaty of Rome, even ten years later they're signing up for the Young European, Single European Act. They've done enormous damage, an enormous, Margaret Thatcher and Tebbit have done enormous damage to our country. But suddenly, just four years after the Single European Act, there she was twenty years ago at Bruges, which by those standards of those days was a different thing altogether. Just a group of countries cooperating together. And so I had the opportunity, since I was invited by the College of Europe, to go and give a speech on the 20th anniversary of, of that, that own particular speech. And uh, so I went to Bruges, I'd never done it before, it's the Venice of the North, and this massive place three quarters empty because I was speaking, I never remember that, um, but there were there's still two or three hundred people there. And the first thing was how very timid was Margaret Thatcher's speech. You know, we're still part of Europe, we're going to play a full part, etc, etc. And how since that time, her comments are becoming more and more and more to our liking. 
So I ended then by saying, when you fell, the day you fell from power, I was the last backbencher to ask you to back continue in office. It shows what judgment I got. And she was gone the following day. But, but she had said no, no, no. So I invited her after that 20th anniversary speech to say, for heaven's sake, you introduced us to the Treaty of Rome, you introduced the Single European Act, so did Norman Demet and others who now believe that they're Eurosceptics. If you say it, if you mean it, just say it, let's get out. Absolutely. Reply, I'm sorry to say, there's been none. But nevertheless, you're a small party, I'm a member of a small party, but we're having a very big impression, a very big part in the big debate as far as you're concerned. This is what it's all about, our ability to govern ourselves, our ability to rejoice in our own history. And there's no better place, I think, to say that than here. Thank you very much. I don't know, it's 12 minutes, 22 minutes, two minutes. But that's what I've got to say. And thank you all for your support for the party and for coming to this afternoon. And then uh, here's some of the old cars lined up. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It's an MG. I don't know much about cars, but isn't that gorgeous? It's a beautiful old MG. And what's this one? This looks like an American car, but it's actually British. It's a Vauxhall from the 40s or 50s. Oh, yeah. It's Let's go over to this one and see what's here. It's got a lovely face, hasn't it? I can see two eyes and a smiley mouth. <laughs> Adorable a ladies' car, I think. And that's. I can't read that behind the camera, but you can. Here's some wonderful old motorbikes. Think of the years that these motorbikes have been riding around in this country. Just think of the history they've seen, the people that's been riding them. Traffic around them, the changing traffic, changing scenery they've been driving through. Isn't that amazing? And the whole concept of the history behind these cars is one of the reasons so many people are here today. Because we all see the danger of our, our very heritage being suckered into the EU and disappearing because that's what they want. That's what they're after. It's wonderful, it's beautiful, it's a bit of old English countryside and it's sad. And here we are. Again, looking at the huge barn, medieval barn. We'll go inside in just a moment. There's some tombola going on there. Here's the band. Very, very good. Nice band. <laughs> we love our brass bands in this country, don't we? Okay, we'll go inside the barn. Okay, it's quite dark in here. Probably gone on. To... There you go. It's a bit better. It's very dark in here, but just wanted to give you a shot, if I can, of the. Uh, old medieval barn here. The slatted windows, isn't that great? And let's see if I can get your beam, is there? Uh, I don't know if you can see the old timbered roof, a white timbered roof actually, it's quite amazing. That's it for the medieval banquet, <laughs> the stage at the end. Wonderful, wonderful old stuff and long may we keep it, long may we keep the invaders out. Hi, this is UKIP TV, we're doing some reality shots now. We're just wandering around this wonderful location, which is Stanway House in Cheltenham. Um, hi you guys, where are you all from? We're from just down the road. Just down the road, where's that? Bishop's Cheltenham? Clean. Bishop's Clean. Woodman Coat. Bishop's Sorry? Woodman Coat, near Bishop's Clean. Oh right, they're in little villages, are they? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Just outside Cheltenham. And are you actually a local member of the, the, the yeah. branch? Yeah. yeah. Duties, yes. But what about the rest of you? Well, we just You're thinking about <laughs> it. Come along <laughs> and support him. Yes. 
<laughs> We're supporting Stuart. Yes. We're su great. Uh, it's good to that you have all this support. <laughs> yes. No, um, I'm Rod. I'm chairman of West Bournemouth um, down in Dorset. And we just came up here because it was such yeah. a lovely day. Are you organising a trip to Brussels? Not me personally, but there is one happening in October. Because we went with the South West. Yeah. Um, there, it will be the South West in October. Yeah. Yeah. And Definitely worth going. Again, you know. To Strasbourg. Yeah, but um, Strasbourg would be interesting. And yeah. Just uh, about it, but he yeah. Yeah. No. Right. So, are you guys um, political or are you Tories no. or no. you're not political? So, not really, you're like the most majority of people. Yes. I'm the political one. Yes. Working. You're the minority. That, yeah. Yeah. That's right. He's been working on me for some while now. <laughs> but do you, do you do you guys actually vote? Or? The locals. Yes. Yeah. Oh well, that's good Council because a lot of people, people don't like bother that, to vote you know. now. Yeah. General election, well, it depends yeah. who's in power at yeah. that particular moment. I think one of the, the main problems now is so many people don't vote. The politicians realise this and they get away with murder. Well, you know. Isn't it? And What's the point of voting? Because all the three parties, the main parties, are exactly the same. Yeah. And the non voters don't show up in the polls, so it reinforces the thing that their vote isn't worth anything. Yeah. yeah. Tony Blair came to power with a majority of 104 in the last time, yeah. but he only got about 34 yeah. percent of the vote. Now you see the problem here, he's already boring all yeah. the non-political people. <laughs> okay. I am looking around, I must admit. I've heard it all before. Yeah. Anyway, but you, you've enjoyed your day today oh, and we're very about, so about to watch the fountains Lovely being turned yes, on. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. If any of you are on the internet, we are actually on the internet now. It's www.ukip.tv. Okay? So, so you might be a star. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Never oh. mind that, I was going to talk to her. All oh, right. I was going to talk to you. <laughs> 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 We're doing some reality TV shots. Well done. Well reality done. TV for you. I look TV. better under a hat. No, you bloody don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> this, is, this is Malcolm Wood, who's the regional organiser. Oh, we organizer. know each other quite well. We've done a few little jobs. That's their dog, jobs, and that's Jenny. We have. <laughs> We've met Jenny. Yeah. Is your man still stirring things up in the States? He is indeed, oh, yeah. yes. Right. I've just come back from there where um, I've been stirring it up as well. Press that well to one lot. Press that to lot. I'm popular again, I'm taking my hat off. <laughs> I saw you earlier and then you disappeared. Yeah, I've just been kind of socialising. We're doing a reality reality uh, TV for you, Yeah, Kip. making Big Brother TV. look stupid. Of course. <laughs> Any words for us now? We need some... Words today? Well, it's been a great day, because one of the things that UKIP can do is enjoy itself. That's and correct. That's the difference between us and the other political parties. It's not the only difference, but we've got a bit more humour and a bit more ziz to us than the rest of them. They're all dyed in the wall, serious politicians, to hell with that stuff. <laughs> all right. And we're okay. all quite normal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, you've got it right, we're normal. We yes. didn't drink like the rest of us. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Do that again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice one. Where are you from? From Cheltenham. From, oh, you're all from Cheltenham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people here from Cheltenham. Yes, it's not far away, is it? Yeah. <laughs> are you all members of the local branch? No. no. Oh, you know, you're no, just no, uh, no. just wanderers. Yes. Yeah. We're supplying attractions for you to look at whilst you're oh, having right. your meeting. Oh, right, you're the guys with <laughs> the vintage cars. Yes. Uh, are, just, are you just the cars or the bikes? All oh, right, very nice. Who owns the MG? Oh, well, you have taste. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean about this? <laughs> well, I... I They're all individual. Yeah. They're all yeah. yeah. This is fun, by the way. We're shooting some stuff for UKIP TV. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, kind of reality TV. We're on the internet. Uh, if you're on the, uh, if you are on the internet, www.ukiptv. Okay. So, 
you might be on there slightly edited. Okay. <laughs> see yourself Thanks, as others see you. <laughs> okay. Can you're a DC7 if you know what that is. <clears throat> Do you know what a DC7 is? It's Dakota. I can hear it. I've done seen it. Oh, there we go, the fly past as well for you, Kim. Yeah. What better? <laughs> Who laid that on? <laughs> anyway, think about yeah, joining you, like Kim. Okay. We're good guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello, where are you from? Where are we from? Tewkesbury. From Tewkesbury, yeah. so you're, you're quite local. Are you members of the local branch here? Um, no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm a member of UKIP, but I'm, I attend, the, I attend the Cheltenham branch from time to time, I attend the county meetings from time to time, but I sort of tend to, uh, since I've joined, you know, been in Tewkesbury, I've sort of canvassed that area, and, yeah. and, and, and it seems as though we're building up a, a oh, decent membership good. in it. In, in um, you do, you know David Bendall? I certainly yeah. Do, yeah. One of the things he told me, the problem in this area, it's very, very tribal Tory, and that's the problem you face. Is that well, I true? Think I think there's a lot of d d disaffected Tories, certainly in, you know, speaking for people I speak to in, in Tewkesbury, there are a lot of staunch Tory people there, I guess. Um, uh, and the, the MP there, Lawrence Robertson, gets pretty good support. But, uh, but um, I was looking at a, a list recently of, of members in in Tewkesbury, and in particular new members, and they seem to be gaining ground there. And, uh, you know. Is there anything you can say to the Tories out there that why they should join UKIP? Every reason, yeah. If they want the proper <laughs> party to join, then join U UKIP. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Hi guys, where are you all from? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you've been you've been drinking too much of this wonderful local beer. <laughs> um, Fern and I are from Bournemouth. From Bournemouth. Yeah, we we've, we've come quite a way today. Yes. Um, and we're just shooting some reality shots for UKIP TV. Um, if any of you on the web, we're on www.ukip.tv. No, we've got snail mail around our area. Snail mail? Snail mail. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A first class post, we'll see it there the next day. So that's all right. Yeah, so but we can't read the, We lead a leisurely life. That's the way to be. And, and turn on the website, though, can you? You have seen it, Jean, haven't you? Oh, oh, well, you shouldn't mention that. You shouldn't mention that. <laughs> we'll censor that part. We'll censor that part. Hey, you can go to the library, you know. You can go to the library and access internet in the yeah. library. Yeah. There you go. No, no, it's all right. See the films. <laughs> We're out in the sticks. So are you oh all members of the local branch? Well, no, no, I'm from North Wiltshire. Oh, right. Oh. Ah. Oh, that area did quite well in the local elections, didn't it? Not bad at all. Yeah. <laughs> you must know, do you know Arlen Wood? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. I do. Yes, of course I do, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're only within a few miles of one another. Yeah, they yeah. So yeah. We all get on, we're very eco-friendly. We all get on our bikes, you know, and whip around and see each other. <laughs> What do you know she's like? <laughs> no, and I also have a little goat that pulls her cart. Oh, right. And so I get out on that also. Can you? Um, you know, which is, uh, that harks back to Victorian times, driving your goat in harness. And so does, she, also, does she actually pull you along? Absolutely. Yes, we were in Is it a big goat? Um, I know a small goat, but I'm only a little person. But she's a very powerful <laughs> goat. Quite a powerful goat. And does she go very fast? <laughs> I, I, I crank her up with good, um, uh, good food. And, and you get cheese possible. from her? Uh, Goat no. cheese? No, no, no. She, you can't expect her to do everything. Oh, so she's not an all singing, all dancing <laughs> goat. She only just pulled you along. She's a rare breed. She's a golden guernsey. <laughs> and are they bred for pulling people? Uh, no, they're bred for, really for meat and for milk, but the great thing about the Golden Guernsey is that they were saved from being um, killed off when Herr Hitler sent his troops to Channel Islands. 
and there was a very knowledgeable lady, Miss Milbourne, yeah. who had an estate there, and she virtually put two fingers up and said, you will not have my kids. And so she secreted them in her caves. Oh. And they managed to get through the Second World War um, without them being, because just about everything else, you know, oh, and because some um, cows, Guernsey cows, were spirited out by... May I ask, when she's too old to stop pulling you, will she become goat stew? Absolutely not. No, no, she'll, be, she'll, she'll probably defy death for rules and be buried oh, right. in my garden. Great. So I will we'll scratch that bit. I will do it the proper way. Good for you. And say thank you to her and let her rest properly. Great, fantastic. Good for you. Um, but other than that, we'd be, we were down last a bank holiday Monday. We were at Sherbourne Castle in Dorset, giving rise to children. Um, and they were enjoying it. Well, much. I'd love to see a picture of this goat, so perhaps you could send us one. Yes, yes, I will do so. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. That would be good. Thank you. Cheers. Where are you Gentlemen. from? Gentlemen. Yeah, and uh, are you you're part of Cheltenham branch, are you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Were you in the Conservatives before? Yes. Never. 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 Shake, shake my hand. <laughs> always. <laughs> but you were always, always. So you were the classic tribal voter, and then what finally made you switch? This thing that says on the side, pull up to Brussels. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see it? It wasn't her? David Cameron. Then. No, no, it wasn't David Cameron. He's not strong well, enough. He's been a for a long time. Ever since Margaret Thatcher left, I've been disappointed. Oh, right, oh, okay. Up, up. Another Iron Lady or Iron Man. So, <laughs> so, are you delusional, like David Cameron says? I don't know. I'm very disillusioned with all of them. No, delusional. Oh, He's delusional. No, not really. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I think uh, it's Europe, really, it's the main thing. It's, uh, it, 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 I, I think the thing has become out of proportion. The idea in the beginning of a trade the thing was good, but not now. But there is so you, you think we should govern ourselves, basically? I think definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. That's what it boils down I mean, we're, to. We're putting up with so much ridiculous and interference the, from Brussels. And um, I feel so sorry Yeah. I think Yeah. The farmers. Well, the farmers, oh yes, very much so. Very much so, they have, yes, indeed. Did you win a prize? Two. Yeah, we won a lot. Oh, the cap and... And a candle. And a candle. I haven't tried yet, though. It's probably been another couple. <laughs> oh, well, be sure to look on the web. We're on the internet, UKIP TV. www.ukip.tv Okay, you might be on there, you if you're lucky. You okay? <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, let's move on and... and of course, I've got to... Wood Spring, uh, which is where? North Somerset minus Western Supermare. Okay, so you've come quite a way then. Portishead, yeah. 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 We come where we come from Bournemouth. All oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. So we've come quite a way as well. Well, you might down the road. Phone is just filming for UKIP TV, mm -hmm. getting oh, a good. general. Yeah. So make yeah, sure you look yeah, nice. Right. <laughs> you come a long way. You come from Charlton. Hi guys. From Charlton. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> anybody who wants to buy one of these, EU project leader, I've got some. All oh, right. I think. Oh. I think we've Can got we have quite it for the camera? We're chipping something, aren't we? We're chipping Sudbury. Chipping Sudbury? Yeah. yeah. Southern Chipbury. <laughs> and how much okay. are your leaflets? Three pounds. Three pounds. Worth every penny of it. Hardened U kippers have been longer U kippers than me have been shocked at what's this is. This is hardcore stuff we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Really yeah. hardcore. Yeah. So, not for the faint hearted. It isn't. You need a <laughs> bottle of Mogadon right. by you. While you, while you <laughs> how do we get a hold of one? Sorry? How do we get hold of one of these? Well, I, can sell you one of today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, for our thousands of viewers watching it. Oh, right. We need to go through technographic systems in uh, Bromley. It was, it was circulated, actually. Does it have a www watch it? Put a link uh, on. No, it's info at the europro.org. Okay, so that's it's good. an email address. Yes. Okay, that's good. Yes. Well, thanks very much, okay. guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Enjoy the, your meal, Lisa. Which television is it then? It's UKIP UK TV. TV. <laughs> www.ukip.tv. Oh. Okay. And also on Google Video. Did you, did you come to the South West Rally? Yeah, over here we have the Bournemouth crowd <coughs> looking very <Salute>. odd. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Tomish. <laughs> I'm very Tom Tomish. <laughs> we're, we're very, of course, we are very, very glad to be here, having relied on, on a satellite navigation system that was perfectly correct. It was in order, but it was the idiot that programmed it that actually got it wrong. I wonder who that was. <laughs> Sent us to Stanway Road no. in the middle of Cheltenham and not Stanway Hall in the middle of the country. Well, I know I am quite impressed. I really am with that. There's no two ways about it. And how many prizes did you win in the uh, tombola? Six altogether. Six, six prizes? Yeah. Just you? No, Jill won two, I won four. Okay, and I won... One. I won, no, I won four, but I gave three back, so we're the winning team. Yeah. Bournemouth is the winning team. Do you think this is going to get a lot of viewers? Do you think this is going to pull the viewers? It's reality TV. Okay, it might jiggle a bit because I'm walking with the camera here, but here we go, um, into the courtyard, heading towards the famous fountain that you heard about earlier. Apparently the tallest gravity fountain in the world. And the fact that it's the tallest in the EU isn't really of much interest to the people here, as you would have heard earlier. So here we go, let's follow them up. We're going up the hill. Let's go and see the fountain. And they're standing there by the edge of the lake where the waterfall is. So another little hill and off we go. Excuse my heavy breathing. <sighs> well, here we are at the lake. I don't know if we can see the fishes in there. Possibly. But anyway, there's plenty of huge goldfish here. And we're looking up the hill. The tower. And very shortly, we're going to see a grand finale where the fountain is turned on. So, give it a few minutes and we'll be ready. So while we're waiting for the fountain, just have a brief glance again at the hall down there. Down there. Isn't it beautiful? And isn't that just the epitome and the history of our country, going way, way back, 13th century? The lady says she thinks it's 13th century. And as she says, how many families have lived here? The, the whole history of our country, and they're trying to rewrite history, they're trying to write all history of England out of the books now. We don't exist. That's what they're trying to do. Oh, this is such a wonderful, wonderful symbol of, of what we are fighting for. Thousands and thousands of people all over the country who realize this is going on. Thousands of people and all over the people in the UKIP, United Kingdom Independence Party now who've got the message. We're doing all we can to save our heritage, along with our freedom, our democracy, and our constitution. So, if you want to do something to save our country, what's the answer? Vote UKIP. Let's wait for the fountain now. There it goes. Whoa! And it's way up there. Way up there. Down we go. The wind changes, we're all going to get very, very wet indeed. <laughs> In case you've got an idea of how tall this is, you can see how tall this is. Just let me back up a wee bit here, go down the hill. <laughs> way, way, way up there. Did you see? That's just amazing. That is just amazing. <laughs> just 
hoping the wind's not going to change. My goodness, we're going to get soaked if it does. <laughs> Coming right from the sky. Remember, this is the tallest one in the world and it's gravity powered. Totally gravity powered. How precious is that? It's a real, real force coming out of there. Isn't that wonderful? So let's imagine the, the lights. Let's imagine the red, white and blue laser lights on there. Let's imagine the orchestra behind us. Let's imagine it playing, what should we have? Land of Hope and Glory. Isn't that wonderful? And that's a great end. It's a wonderful afternoon here. Many thanks to our hosts, the UTIP members out having fun. This is what we do a lot of. Come and join us. You'll love it in UTIP land. <laughs>